Uh, we see you guys over there, Ramon and Jonathan. Yeah, hi, how are you? Good afternoon. First of all, I want to thank uh, our team here has been working very hard for the last couple of days and it's still not finished because we have to come back tomorrow and, uh, and uh, we have a very interesting case for you all today. Uh, so can we have our slides please? Next please. We have nothing to disclose, Dr. Robertson and myself. Uh, next please. It's a 60 year old gentleman who came in December with an acute stroke. Uh, uh, past medical history, you had uh, dyslipidemia, hypertension, no smoker, uh, and, uh, and smoker actually. Uh, history of strokes in their family. His father had it at age 60. There was no medication prior to the event. And was left with a mild aphasia. Next, please. His neurological workup, except for the fact that he did have an MI, uh, a stroke, and it was an occlusion of the left middle cerebral artery, there was no source of emboli. And by TE, it showed that the patient had a, a patent for amen ovale with right, with right to left shunt, we'll show you in a minute, and, uh, and a flappy septum. So in this case, it was a cryptogenic stroke, meaning that there was no other source of, uh, of embolization to the brain, except for the fact that there was a shunt and a tunnel in the heart, a patent for amen ovale. So neurology had refer this patient for closure of the source of emboli, which in this case, obviously, is the foramen ovale. So we plan to do that, and we'll show you some images. So uh, here with us is our cardiac anesthesiologist, Dr. Ralph Machado, who really has been very uh, uh, helpful for all of us to, to help the structural program to go on so we can have uh, high-quality imaging. So Ralph, go ahead. Hi, how are you? Uh, we've uh, gone ahead and, and gotten some 3D images to show you. I'll just show you some of the quick uh, uh, 2D images that we're interested in. Here at a multiplane angle of 65 degrees, we see the root of the aorta and the entrance to the right side of the PFO channel. This patient has a hypermobile septum as well. Um, here the, we, have, we have acquired a 3D well, image. Oh, yeah, there we got it. We didn't have it. Now we see it. Okay. Here's a 3D image, and, and here where, where you see the arrow, you can see the uh, left side of the PFO channel. Uh, and in a minute, I hope to show you one with the wire going across. Let's see. One second. Here we go. This is a 3D live image, and you can appreciate the tenting of the... Uh, 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 septum uh, primum there uh, as the wire comes across it. Uh, one of the interesting things that we've uh, learned from using 3D is that these are really um, uh, curvilinear structures and the, oftentimes we measure a, uh, a particular distance in 2D to try to size the length of the channel and it's really much shorter than that. Uh, uh, and, and here we're what we're doing is we're measuring the distance from the right side of the channel to the aortic root. Um, uh, in order to size our device. Ramon, do you have any comments regarding the images? You want to see the uh, stop flow? Yes. Here's this is the image of the, uh, of the balloon across the sept, across the uh, tunnel. We size with balloon on most of the sizing. We use the balloon for anatomically see the, 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 the morphology of the tunnel. We help us to decide what kind of device we're going to use to close this. Go ahead, uh, Ralph. Um, so, in order to uh, measure uh, the, uh, the, the, the stop flow, what we've done here is we have color compare. Uh, we see no flow coming across the, uh, the balloon, the, uh, balloon and, or, and there we've measured, again, um, eight, eight millimeter or, eight, or nine millimeter uh, uh, channel, channel length. Uh, 